And here, let's see, I have to pin my video. There we go. All right. Make sure you have your, your stretchy belt or your um, uh, necktie or uh, sash from a robe and some water so we can begin class. So thank you for coming, Sue. <laughs> we are ready to begin by coming forward in our chair and sitting towards the front edge. Sit on the sit bones, uh, not falling forward or falling back, but sitting straight down on those sit bones. Lift up through the crown of your head as you begin to experience that tall, tall spine. Let each shoulder roll back a tiny bit. Have your hands on your thighs and look straight ahead. This is the beginning of bringing your awareness to a tall spine. Now I'm going to lose that tallness in my spine as I turn towards the camera. We're going to begin with our foundation now. So position your feet parallel and about hip distance apart with toes straight ahead. Have your knee over the ankle. That sets up the femur bone into the hip socket just right. Then place your hands on your thighs. Press into your feet to feel the stability of the floor. Press into your sit bones to feel the stability of the chair. Now let's re restore that tall spine. Lift through the crown of your head. Let each shoulder roll back and get a sense of the shoulder blade moving towards the spine. Try it on the right and try it on the left. Now with the awareness of those shoulder blades, press forward against the back ribs and lift up. So the chest opens up and lifts. The shoulders remain, remain pressed back. Chin comes in a bit. And then look straight ahead. Close your eyes. And begin to follow your breath. Follow the inhale and the exhale. On the inhale, feel that breath be pulled in, feel the air being pulled in through your nostrils. Pause a moment at the top and then exhale. Inhale again and find that action of air coming in through the nostrils. Pause a moment and now exhale. Let air be expelled and then pause there as well. So we're pausing after each action. Try it one more time. Inhale, bringing air into the nostrils, pausing at the top, exhaling, letting air be expelled and feel and feel that pause. Continue for a few more moments on your own. We're going to transition now. So let's start parting the eyelids and letting the eyes focus and adjust to the light in the room. 
Make sure you have water so you can hydrate during class at uh, your own discretion. And make sure you have a belt or some prop that you can use for stretching arms and legs. We're going to start with our neck. Allow the chin to come down to the chest and feel the stretch of the back of the neck. You'll feel stretching of the vertebrae apart. Now, slowly and gently, bring that chin forward and then lift up towards the ceiling. Now we're stretching the front of the neck. You'll be stretching muscle as well as fascia. As you dip your head back, eyes look upward. Then let's try it again. Lower the chin down to your chest and feel the stretch in the back of your neck. Maintain that for a few moments. Maybe some of the stretch is starting to spread into the upper back. That's fine. Now one more time. Draw the chin forward and start to lift it up towards the ceiling. There's that stretch on the front of your neck again. All muscles are stretching. And you get that bonus of the thyroid gland getting a massage. Now begin to lower down slowly and come to front and center at the middle line. We're going to come to a rotation now. So that means we're starting to turn our head towards the right. So do that. Turn your head, look over the right shoulder, and begin to feel a little twisting there. Don't overwhelm yourself, but just feel enough rotation so you can feel those muscles. Bring the chin back to center and turn your head rotated towards the left, looking over your left shoulder. Once again, don't overdo your effort. Just feel a gentle twisting or squeezing. Now we'll bring the chin back to center and we'll go for a side stretch. Bring the right ear down to your right shoulder begin to feel that stretch on the left side of your neck. You always can drop your ear down more, but that's all about you managing this class and doing what you can do best for your body. Bring your chin back up to center and allow the left ear to fall to the left shoulder. Now remember, you can go deeper on this side as well. Sometimes sides are different, so don't be concerned if one side goes lower than the other. Do be concerned about the stretch you're getting on the right side of your neck. And then bring the chin back to center. Perfect. Next, we're going to come to that point in between the sternum and the right shoulder. Start to slowly turn your head towards the right, but not as far, and lower that chin down towards your chest. Feel the stretch at the back of the neck. It gets in that left corner, just right. Bring your chin back up and bring your chin back to center. Now, somewhere between the sternum and the left shoulder, turn your head, but not as far. Lower that chin down and find that stretch at the back right corner. These are areas that we don't normally stretch, but we do feel tension in these areas. 
only go where you can manage, remember. And then bring that chin back up and back to center. Now we have a new one that we had started learning. And this is the one where you take your right hand to your left shoulder with the thumb at the thermal sternal notch and the fingers towards the right shoulder. The outside of your index finger will line up with the collarbone. Bring your left hand to rest on that right hand. Now bring that, those hands to press into your chest slightly and move down. Turn your head in the opposite way towards the right. So you feel some stretch on that left side of your neck. You can lift the chin up just slightly so you can feel some more. Then here's the add-on. Bring your chin straight forward and lift up. Oh, right here on either side of the throat is where we're focusing. So our first focus is on that front left side. Then lower your chin halfway down, release your hands. Bring your left hand to your right shoulder. Have the thumb line up with the sternal knot and the outside of your index finger lining up with that collarbone. Bring your right hand to rest on that left hand. Now gently push into the chest and pull down. Turn your head in the opposite direction towards the left and lift up a bit. You'll feel some stretch right on that right side of your neck. Now the new part bringing that chin forward and lifting up with still the hands pressing in and pulling down on the muscle. And then lower your chin down and release both hands. Excellent. Okay, let's see what's next. I want to predict it's the shoulder complex and I'm right. So let arms come down to your side and bring shoulders up and lower down. 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 Now let's do a roll on the right shoulder. Be aware of the shoulder blade starting to glide towards the spine. Start with that shrug, roll the shoulder back and feel the arm move back and the shoulder move to the spine. Release and bring that arm back to center of your side body. Bring the left shoulder up this time. Now roll it back. Arm starts moving back too. And so the shoulder blade moves towards the spine. Release and bring that shoulder back and the arm to the side of your body. Next, we're extending both arms out to the side. Reach through the fingertips and experience some lengthening. Once you feel that lengthening, move those arms to the wall behind you. Just a trifle, don't go too far. But do feel the opening in your chest and those shoulder blades on the back body coming towards the spine. Now, we're going to turn the palms up, not working from the wrist, but the upper arm. So slowly keep the length and start to roll those arms so the palms come up. That rotation of the arm is very important because you're using all your arm muscles. Perfect. Now bring the arms up where you can manage. Maybe it's here at that V shape. Try to keep elbows pulled in. So this may be where you stop. Or maybe you go up a little further, elbows in, and that might be where you stop. 
I'm going to parallel arms. Palms are facing. I know you can't see them in the camera. Now lower those arms down to shoulder level. Turn the palms towards the floor by working the whole arm and then lower those arms down. Shake those arms out just a little bit. We're going to cross our arms and come to our hug. Once again, arms are down at your side and you're lifting up to shoulder level. Find the length first and draw the arms back. Now begin to cross the arms in front of the middle line of your body. You don't have to go fast and you don't have to go 100 times, maybe four. I'm coming to my fourth one right now. And whatever arm is on top, leave it there. Bend your elbows and hold on to your shoulders, your upper arms, your forearms, or your wrists. Lift the elbows up wherever you can manage and feel that hug. You're starting to work those armpit chests right now. Then release your arms, trying to remember which arm was on top, and extend again. Draw the arms back. Shoulder blades move a bit in towards the spine. Let's cross again. Four times, please. Just crossing in front. When you cross your arms, that broadens the back body. That's where the uh, trapezius muscle and the rhomboids are. So this is a good one. Maybe this is number four, but my arm that needs to be on top wasn't there. So I'm doing one extra and then bringing my hands to uh, the shoulders, the forearms, the upper arms, or the wrists. I try to always alternate which arm is on top. And I didn't make a good mental note about that. So once again, lift the elbows up and feel the armpits starting to open. Then release those arms out to the side and once again, lower those arms down. We're going to come to arms extended next and interlacing of those fingers. So here we go, extending arms forward to the camera, interlacing fingers, working those fingers right into the webbing, touch thumbs, cross pinkies, and flip those hands. So the hands, the palms of the hands are facing the camera. I'm going to just release for a minute so I can show you about those elbows. Now, some of us could bring them in a little bit. Try that. If you can pull elbows in so arms are straight, go for that goal. That is part of the alignment. It also bends the wrist and presses the palms forward. And squeeze your fingers. <laughs> All right, now start to bend the elbows back out, flip the palms, and notice which index finger's on top. And change the index finger on top by changing the interlace of your fingers. Touch thumbs, cross pinkies, and one more time, press the palms of your hands towards the camera, if it's available to you. Draw the elbows in any amount, just so you start lengthening all the muscles that are attached to those bones. That's it. Bend into the wrist a little more by pulling in those elbows. Press through the index finger mound towards the camera and feel the squeezing of those fingers. To release, bend the elbows out to the side, flip the palms and release the interlace of your fingers. Bravo, good job. Next, we're going to come to our tricep stretch. So please extend your right arm forward and lift it up. 
bend your right elbow out to the side as your hand comes to the back of your head, your neck, or the middle of your back where you feel some of those knobby things that are called vertebrae <laughs> in the middle of your back. You can also move your hand to the right shoulder blade. Choose what works best for you. Take your left hand and stroke up that tricep muscle, the bottom of the arm, upper arm. Stroke up to the elbow where you can manage. As you stroke up and lift a little more, the armpit starts to elongate and open up. Lower that right elbow down and let's go to the left one. Extend your left arm forward. Bring that arm up. Bend the left elbow out to the side and have your hand come to the back of your head, neck, the middle of your back, or to that left shoulder blade. Take your right hand and stroke up to the elbow. Now remember, as you move that elbow up, maybe even a tiny bit, you're going to be opening up that left armpit chest, so important. And then lower that elbow down and rest your left arm. So next, we're going to, I have to turn around to show you. We're going to take this right shoulder and roll it back and bend the right elbow so the forearm comes across the back waist. Now this may be not possible to do for you. So go where you can go, maybe just to the side and in a little bit. Next, with the left arm, you're going to bend that left elbow out to the side and bring it across the back of your waist. Maybe you can hold Work your hands to hold on to the elbows. Uh, maybe it doesn't work that way. So hold on to forearms or wrists. All of that is working. And then give the right shoulder a roll back, keep it there, and the left shoulder a roll back and keep it there. And now think about a um, $100 bill being between those shoulder blades being held so you don't miss out on catching it <laughs> and spending it. <laughs> so we're opening up the front of the chest. So release those arms now. And let's try the other side. First, the left arm bends out to the side and comes across the back waist. Then, Bend the left, um, the right elbow out to the right side and bring that arm on the front of the left. Maybe you can work your hands to hold on your elbows. If that's not available, you can always hold on to the forearms or the wrists. Maybe you just want to make a handshake behind you. That's perfectly fine. First. Now, let's go to the shoulders. Move the left shoulder back and move the right shoulder back and see if you can maintain that with a chest that is open. Then release your hands and that's over with. <laughs> you can shake your arms out. All right, next, we're going to do namaste hands, arms over our head, and we're going to rotate. So let me adjust my screen and have everybody watch first. All right, so you don't see my feet and that's all right because the lower torso is not going to move. 
pretend that you have two buckets in front of you and you have placed your feet in those buckets and those buckets are filled with cement. So you're not going to move those legs at all. Next, you're going to sit up tall. So recover that tall spine. Lift through the crown of your head as you press down into your feet and sit bones. Now, lower the arms down to your side and then lift those arms up to maybe namaste hands. Now, you can bend your elbows if you want. I'm going to try to extend mine. So the rotation part comes now. This is the upper torso moving to the right. So let your legs move and come back to center. Let's go to the left side. S sit tall and start to rotate the upper torso towards the left and come back to center. Now, if you're tired holding your hands um, in this namaste hand overhead and you really want elbows bent, maybe hold on to your elbows, your forearms or your wrists like we did in that other exercise and twist to the right again. Then come back to the center and the breathing part on that is Inhaling here at the center and exhaling to the left side. And then come back to center. Now release those arms out to the side and lower down. We've done a lot with our arms so far. So let's come to our hands and wrists and fingers just briefly. We didn't do too much wrists or hand or fingers so far. So extend both hands, palms facing the camera, and drop the fingers down, lift the fingers up, using the wrist. Oftentimes we make that fist as well, but today just something different. The elbows are slightly bent and you're bending at the wrist, similar to what we do with our ankles. Now rotate those hands at the wrist. So I'm not moving so much of my upper arm. My forearm is moving a little bit. Try the other direction too. Perfect. And then shake those hands out. And one more for fingers and wrist. Extend your right hand forward and get those four right fingers close together. Take your left hand and bring it to those four fingers and pull back. Oh yeah, there's that stretch. Let's get rid of any potential for carpal tunnel. And then release. Extend the left hand forward, get those four left fingers close together. Take your right hand and pull back. and then release. Shake those hands out. Perfect. Okay, let's go to our spinal actions next. And we'll combine them, starting with roundness and then arching. So please join me. Sit up tall first. Get the shoulders back and feel some openness in the chest. Take an inhale, exhale, Lower the chin down, lower the shoulders down. Start to feel roundness in your back, like you're looking for that lost Kleenex on the floor. Pull tummy muscles in and create some tension in that upper trapezius muscle to round. Then release and bring the chin forward like you're scraping it against the sidewalk. Straight, then lift that chin up towards the ceiling. Now the front of your torso is tall. We need to get those shoulders back. So we're arching the back. So roll the right shoulder back and the left shoulder. Holding, your hands are holding onto the side of your chair seat or your armrest 
and you're lifting the heart towards the ceiling. Now any amount, press those shoulder blades towards the spine. Feel some arching. If you desire to feel more arching, then bring the hands to the back of your chair seat. Roll the shoulders back one more time and lift that chest up to the ceiling. Feel that arching in your upper back. That friend of yours has their fist digging right into, in between those shoulder blades. Then lower the chin, release your hands, and let them rest on your thighs. We're getting ready for our side stretches and our twisting. Sitting tall and holding on to the right arm rest or your chair seat, lift the left arm straight up like you're making a straight line on the left side of your body from the hip through the rib cage, armpit, chest, all the way to your fingertips. Now bring your arm over your ear. Don't round it like a uh, ballerina, but keep it straight at a diagonal. And then bring it back and lower it down. Let's try the right arm. So bring that right arm forward and up and press into that right sit bone and think of a straight line going from the hip through the rib cage, armpit, chest, all the way up to your fingers. And lean to the left, keeping a straight arm. No ballerina arms here today. And bring it up and lower it down. Let's try it one more time on left and right. Lift the left arm forward and up. Press into the left sit bone. Lift through the left fingertips to get that straight line along the left side of your body and lean to the right. Keep that left sit bone down. Keep your arm in a diagonal. No ballerina arms today. Bring that arm up and lower the arm down. Hold on to your chair seat or your armrest. Lift the right arm up. Now we're creating that straight line from the hip through the side ribs, armpit, chest, and the fingertips. And we're leaning to the left. Don't let that right sit bone lift up, but keep your arm straight. That's it, perfect. And bring that arm up and lower that arm down. Excellent work. Now for our twisting. Use your right hand to hold on the armrest or chair seat as the left arm comes across to your outer right knee. Sitting tall, take an inhale, and on three little steps, we're going to take breath and twist. Here's the first one. Take an inhale, exhale and twist. Inhale again, exhale and twist. Inhale last time. Exhale, twist. So that left shoulder has made its way towards the right. That's what your twisting is all about. Then release and come back to center. Take your left hand to the armrest or chair seat and the right arm comes across to the outer left knee. Lift tall and in three steps, we're going to be inhaling and exhaling, moving the upper torso towards the left. Inhale, exhale, twist. Inhale, exhale, twist. Inhale, exhale, twist. Stay there, hold it a moment, and then unwind and come back to center. All of that twisting gets into our chest cavity where it squeezes those internal organs for detoxification and more healthiness. Okay, next up is our tummy. So here we go. Okay, so. Lean back, find your chaise lounge, and of course, we're going to go bicycling. So use your right knee to lift up and extend that right leg. Waking up all those muscles around 
outside of the right pelvis, the hip flexors, the rotators, they're all there. <laughs> and lower that foot down. Now the left side, bring that left knee up and extend that left leg. Keep working all those muscles around the left side of your pelvis. All right, you can continue to alternate each leg. Or you can bring both knees up and extend and bend the knees back to your chest. And then lower those feet down, lift yourself up. And now we're going for forward bend. And that works the lower belly muscles. So sit tall, bring your arms up towards the ceiling or V shape wherever you can manage. Take an inhale, exhale and hinge at the top of your thigh. That's the hip hinge. And you're leaning forward, not to touch the floor, but just to extend the arms forward and feel that hinge right at that hip crease. Lift up and lower your arms down. Now, if you weren't quite sure where that hinge is, take the pinky side of your hands and place the pinky side of your hands right in that hinge. Keep your hands there. Take an inhale, lift tall through the crown of your head, and now hinge forward. Oh, there it is. I can feel it. <laughs> That's where we're hinging from. Not from the waist, but from that hip hinge. Then lift yourself back up and relax. We're going to come to our legs next and use that belt. First, let's start by bringing hands under the right thigh and bringing that knee up. Then extend that lower right heel, right leg, press into the heel to feel the calf muscle, and then point your toe. Press into the heel, point your toe. Now rotate the ankle around. And the other direction. Now bring that knee up and catch that right ankle and place it on your thigh. We're going right for that piriformis muscle right now. Now if this is not available, cross the right ankle over the left ankle and place your hands at the inner knee of the right leg and slide your hands to the inner thigh. You do the same thing if you have that ankle on your left thigh. Hands to the inner right knee, sliding down to the inner right thigh and press that knee away. This will show up in our standing pose today. Then release and let that ankle come down. Perfect. All right, let's go to the left. Bring your hands under that left thigh, bring the knee up and extend that lower left leg. Press into the heel and then point your toe. Press into your heel, feel that calf muscle and point your toe. Rotate the ankle so you're opening up that ankle, giving it stretch. Try the other direction. And then bend that knee and if you catch that left ankle, you can place it on your right thigh or you can cross the left ankle over the right ankle at the floor. Take your hands in either place um, and your hands come to the inner left knee, sliding down to the inner left thigh. Place hands on the inner left thigh and press that knee away. So when you look at a diagram of the piriformis, it is, uh, seems to be very short muscle um, that does all this stretching for us. Good. And then release that ankle from wherever you had it. Next, we're coming to our belts. So please reach for your belt. Slide the right heel forward 
and position that belt at the bottom of your shoe. Even off the side of the belt, walk your hands down one side of the belt, um, either side of the belt. Press into the heel, begin to observe a slight gripping of your knee, but when you pull on that belt, you feel that calf muscle intensely and that gripping of that right knee and contraction in that top right thigh, it's all there. Sitting tall, lift that heel off the floor to hip level and then lower down again. Here's number two. Keep the intensity on the pull of the belt and the flex in the heel. Here's number three. And here's the last one, pull, hold it there, press into the heel, pull more on the belt, and then lower down. Take the left side of your belt into your right hand while the right hand, no, nope, left hand, holds on to your armrest or chair seat. Sitting tall, pull on the belt, press into that heel, and lift that leg up, and this time, swing the leg out to the side and back in. Now swing back out again and lower that heel and lift up. Lower the heel and lift up. Why do we always do these belted leg exercises? It's to keep all those leg muscles tuned up, <laughs> toned up. And we're working on hamstrings, which need not to hurt us. <laughs> so that's why we're doing these. There's more reasons, of course. So let your foot come down and slide that left heel forward. Take the belt around the middle of your shoe and then one hand on each side of the belt. Begin the flexing in the heel. There's a little bit of that calf muscle and grip of the knee. Now pull with the belt and there's much more intensity revealed. So lift that heel away from the floor up to hip level and back down again three more times. But keep that level of intensity. It is so good for your leg. Now that was my number four. Take the right side of your belt into your left hand while the right hand holds on to the chair seat. Flex into the heel again if it got lazy like mine did. Pull on the belt, lift the leg to hip level, and swing it out to the side. Swing it out to the side. Perfect. Now swing it out one more time and lower that heel and lift that leg up. Lower the heel, lift up. Lower the heel, lift up. Lower the heel, lift up. Swing the leg back in, bend the knee, and lower that foot down. You can put the belt to the side and please take a drink. We're going to be standing up next. And please, when you stand up, go behind your chair. We're going to start with Tadasana. I'll put my chair to the side and we're going to do a, a few different arm stretches with Tadasana. Now remember, if you're holding on to the chair, that's fine. You can do one at a time. So first it's getting into our Tadasana. Have your feet about hip distance apart. Toes straight ahead. You're behind your chair and you can be holding on. Press down into your feet and lift through the crown of your head. Roll each shoulder back. Feel the openness of your chest. If your hands are on the backrest of your chair, you can push down into your chair and lift the chest up as well. Now watch first, I'm going to do Urdhva Hastasana, which are parallel arms. I'm going to let my arms come out to the side and lift up where I can manage it and then come back down. I'll give you some more cues for wherever you stop your arms. 
So if this is challenging to you, do one arm at a time. All right, standing tall and bring your arms out to the side and lift up, even if it's one arm. Now drop the shoulder blades down, pull tummy muscles in and reach for the ceiling in your specific way that allows you to manage this class. And then lower the arms down. Perfect. Our next one is going to be, oh, you need your belt. I have to get my belt. Please watch first. I'm going to turn around so you can see what happens. Take your belt into your hands and put it behind your back. Stand in Tadasana and you're going to make uh, your hands position at about shoulder distance apart and you're going to have a taut belt between your hands and you're going to lift behind you and back down again. So if you're ready, and, or if you already practice, that's all right. Here's the real deal right here. All right, standing in Tadasana and pressing our arms back behind us at any level that you can manage and back down again. So maybe give a roll to each shoulder now, right and left, to feel those shoulder blades a little closer. Maybe that will help you extend a little more. Let the muscles experience some stretch when you push that belt back. Try one more or just simply rest. And then release your belt to the side. Our final one is Tadasana holding uh, behind our back like we did earlier. So my back will be towards the camera. Find your Tadasana standing tall and bring the right arm at that back waist. Then bend the left elbow and bring it on top of the right arm it crosses a little bit and maybe hold on to elbows. Maybe hold on to forearms. Maybe hold on to wrists. Maybe just interlace your fingers behind you. But choose one of those ways to have your arms behind you. Stand tall and feel those shoulders roll back. Perfect. Then release those arms. Now we're going to start with the left arm. Bend the left elbow and bring it at the back waist. Bend the right elbow and bring it sort of on top of that other arm. Maybe you can hold on to elbows. Maybe you can hold on to forearms. Maybe wrists. Maybe you prefer a handshake behind your back. Keep the shoulders back and then release your arms. Perfect. All right, next we're going to come to tree pose. So I want you behind your chair to hold on. I want you at the side of your chair, uh, only if you uh, your chair is in that position. We're going to start so you're pressing your weight into your left leg. Press down into all four corners of your foot. Grip the knee of that left leg. Make it solid and strong. Then, because it's very light on the right leg, start to lift the right heel and bend the right knee. Your toe is on the um, floor yet, so pivot on it and slide that toe towards your ankle. 
and you'll notice that your knee is bent out to the right side. So this is the foundation for tree pose. If you choose, you can lift that toe off the floor and press your foot at the inside of the left calf muscle. Then you might choose your hands to be at your heart. This is half a namaste. Maybe you want a full namaste. Maybe you don't. <laughs> you can also bring an arm up if you choose. Now, think about the rotation of the femur bone in that hip socket going out to the side. You might feel some gripping in that right gluteus maximus, <laughs> the buttocks. All right, release. And now we'll try the other side. I have to change my chair for the camera. All right, this time the right leg is going to be the support leg. So start to press into all four corners of your foot, gripping the knee and contracting the thigh. Keep it strong and solid. Then you've transferred weight already into that right leg. So the left leg feels loose. Start to lift the left heel and bend the left knee. Pivot on your toes so the sole of your shoe comes to the inner right ankle. Your left knee will be bent out to the side. Now, if you choose, stay here. Or maybe you'd like to try bringing your foot up to that inside calf muscle on the right leg. Try to stay tall. And then keep your leg wherever you prefer and bring your hand to half a namaste or an arm lifted up or full namaste. Now you'll notice that I've lost my balance a couple of times and let my toe come down and return my foot back to the calf muscle. Takes a lot of practice to do this tree pose. Then release your leg and release your hands. Now our next one is going to be um, a pose where we're using that bent leg out to the side, just like tree pose. So sit down and take a rest while I show you how to do this. I'm going to move my chair back to this side so you can watch. You gotta move back a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to have my feet a little wider than hip distance apart. And I'm simply going to bend into the knees. Now this is not a full squat, it's just a bend of the knee. And I don't do it harshly. I don't bend um, deeply, but it's a soft, gentle bend. Now, after we do that bend a couple of times, we'll walk the feet in a little bit where it's comfortable and you can adjust this if you want. So here I am bending into my knees again. It's very gentle, it's not harsh, and it's not deep. I'm going to bring all my body weight into this left leg and this right leg feels loose now. And I've lifted that right heel and have kept that right knee bent. Now I'm going to lean a little more into um, this left leg that's still bent, lift my foot and bring the ankle to that left thigh. So this is working on the piriformis again, but it's also using balance uh, in your uh, single leg that you're supported with. Then I straighten up my torso and maybe I hold on <laughs> with one arm and have half a namaste, or maybe it's full namaste, maybe it's arms up, maybe it's nothing. <laughs> and then you'll straighten that left knee and release the right leg. 
and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we're really working a lot on those hip flexors and those rotators. So now that you had a little rest, come behind your chair, please, and hold on to the backrest of your chair. Have your feet opened up a little wider than your hips and just simply bend your knees to get some blood flow in that area that we're going to be working with. I'm on the fourth one of my bent knee there. All right, then keep those bent knees um, or straighten them up and walk your feet in a little bit and then re-bend those knees. So our next step is putting all weight into that left leg, starting to be able to lift that right heel keeping both knees bent, lifting that toe off the floor and coming to the thigh. Now, if this is not available to you, have your leg cross at the lower leg with your toe on the floor. I forgot to add that as an option in my demonstration. Then straighten the torso up. Mine always gets a little um, forward. And choose an arm or two or nothing. It's up to you. And then release, straightening that left knee and bringing that right leg back to a solid foundation. All right, let's try the other side now. We're standing tall and our feet are a little wider than hip distance apart. And we're just bending into those knees a little bit just to get some blood flow in there. Here comes the last one. And you can move your feet in a little closer, whatever feels comfortable. And remember, you can adjust. So I'm bending my knees again putting my weight into my right leg, being able to lift my left heel up. I'm going to pick the toe up off the floor and bring that left ankle to my right thigh. My right knee is bent, my left knee is bent. So I'm straightening up the torso and thinking about uh, maybe a half a namaste hand, a full namaste hand, or arms overhead. Whoops, there we go. Now remember, if this is not working for you, you can cross your leg at the lower leg with the toe on the floor and come to namaste or arms overhead. It's all balancing, so you're not losing out at all. <laughs> and it's also a piriformis stretch in this. It's a very soft one here. You might even call it passive, um, where all those rotators and rotators and extensors are, are working for us. All right, release that foot. And we're going to come to uh, our seat again. And we're going to do a, a, a little twist. Um, and if you have a hip replacement, um, this is not going to work for you because I'm taking my right leg, crossing it over the left, but you could move your feet into the middle line of your body that you can't see me doing. And cross one ankle over the other, just like we did in our other stretch. Uh, for piriformis. So in this one, we're go I'm going to take hands under the right thigh, bring that right knee up and cross it over my left thigh and place my hands on my knees just to have them somewhere and then sit tall. Now remember, if this doesn't work for you, you're crossing your ankles at the floor. 
Now, my hands, by pressing into my top leg, lifting up tall, I'm going to squeeze my legs together and I'm going to bend my elbows, holding on opposite forearms, and I'm twisting to the right, coming back to center, and twisting left, and coming back to center. Then release the arms, and if your leg was crossed over the left thigh, release that, or release the ankle cross. Now remember, you can do the ankle cross with the left ankle over the right, or hands under that right thumb, left thigh, bringing the left knee up and over the right thigh. Once you have, if this, if you try this and it doesn't work for you, remember you can cross ankles at the floor. I'm just interlacing fingers at the um, top of my knee and I'm pressing in a little bit and lifting up to be tall. And then I bend my elbows, hold on to the elbows or forearms, and I'm twisting to the left, and back to center, and twisting to the right, and coming back to center. Then releasing arms, lowering them down, releasing my leg, and now we're coming into our resting period, our Shavasana. So I encourage you to sit tall in seated mountain pose with your hands on your thighs. Pressing into the feet, pressing into the sit bone, lifting tall through the crown of your head, but shoulders down. See if you can make a significant press down with the shoulders. Then close your eyes and breathe. Today is our reading about gratitude. Gratitude that we're at the end of February, we'll be beginning March tomorrow. A whole new set of sunshine increasing every day. With gratitude, I remember the people, animals, plants, insects, creatures of the sky and sea, air and water, fire and earth, all whose joyful exertion blesses my very life every day. With gratitude, I remember the care and labor of thousand generations of elders and ancestors, ancestors who came before me. I offer my gratitude for the blessing of this earth I have been given. I offer my gratitude for the measure of health I have been given. I offer my gratitude for the family and friends I have been given. I offer my gratitude for the community I have been given. I offer my gratitude for the teachings and lessons I have been given. I offer my gratitude for the life I have been given. Lower your chin, bring namaste hands to your heart. Let the intelligence of your brain bow to the wisdom you find to your loving heart. And to close our class, may you be healthy, may you be happy, and may you stay safe. Lift your chin, open your eyes, smile, and namaste, my friends. Thank you so much for coming to class. Have a wonderful rest of your day 
and I'll see you um, next Sunday. Oh, well, next Friday. <laughs> next Friday, too. <laughs> So, um...